I think I think we just went live, Eric. Hey everybody, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's been a spell, which only is three weeks, but <laughs> uh, here we are. We're back again, back in the saddle, and this time joined by our favorite new presenter uh, and V-Ray and illustration expert, our friend Eric. Are you still with us? Hey, yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. Thanks for having my voice and not my face this time. Uh, this is a new experience for me, so looking forward to today's stream. It's not. You, Eric is all over our campus videos, so uh, voice only, nah, you, you've got that well handled. That's right, that's yeah, right. We've, we've been doing this a little while. I hope we know what we're doing here today. Oh, that's a stretch. That's a stretch. That's no, a you, stretch. you got this. You got this. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we've been... Uh, we were gone for two weeks for base camp. I'm sure we will be talking about that. Uh, maybe more than anybody who wasn't there wants to hear about because it was quite at the experience. But this is one of the things that on the little bit of downtime we had, we got to go see the steam clock in Vancouver. This is just a photo I took actually. Um, what I, I think we'd heard about this steam clock in a previous modeling session. Somebody had recommended it um, a few months ago. So actually seeing it and being like, oh, that's that's it. That's that's the clock. It was it was cool to realize it's just on the corner of a street that's near downtown. Um, yeah, you can't miss it because there's always a crowd of like five or six people. What you can see in this photo here, there's like six or seven people just watching the clock, which is um, I guess the fact that it's steam powered makes it that much more special. Yeah, and 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 I took this after you can see like we're five seven minutes after the hour because as it gets to the quarter and the half hour and especially on the top of the hour, it shoots off and makes music um, using the the steam whistles on top and there is a not five or six there's like twenty sometimes 30 people surrounding and everybody's got their phones up filming it. <laughs> uh, it's a cool clock. We're, this shouldn't, shouldn't, that might be bad to say from the beginning, this shouldn't be a, a very um, technically difficult model to make. It's got some interesting details and I guess we'll say from the beginning or uh, I will own up. I don't have good references for the inside, so I'm not planning on doing any of the inner gears. If we find some, certainly can do it in a future session. Hey, if Hey, Tyson, I know yeah. you're going to show this in a second, but you're, you're, if you could move the clock over to the left of your screen. Oh, uh, my face over. over it? Go, yeah, because your face is so big. You can't see your own face and we can see it. I should have I should have caught this a second ago, but <laughs> I was just I just didn't I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, so there you go. I think people I think people who haven't been here, uh, who didn't see it in person, uh, kinda want to see what you're modeling. Uh, might that be helpful. Is a good call. Call me out sooner on next next time. I should uh, know okay. that after doing this for a while. Rookie rookie mistake. <laughs> I know. That's all right. So this, this might be one of the reference images. We're just going to model this off a of reference image. Let's get started. That's enough yapping. Um, based on the tiny little bit of looking around we did 10 minutes ago, <laughs> uh, the clock is supposed to be somewhere in the range of 16, 17 feet tall. Here's um, an image that is more directly, let me switch over directly um, looking straight on. So I'm going to use this one to build a profile. And my strategy for this one, if we were building this more like it would be built, then we would take a different approach. I'm going to take the approach that this is a square sides clock. We just need to create the profile and create one of these sides and build it out as components because every side is basically identical. So we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of uh, the work done by components for us. So let me bring this image in. Are they are, are, are all four four sides the same though? I mean I know there's a plaque on it, but I guess we could ignore that. I guess that was my first question is is whether we should assume that it's identical or not. Based on what I could see, 
Yes, and uh, for my purposes today, I'm going to assume that they are largely identical. the The base, there's there's vents um, that might be open and closed on each side a little differently, but otherwise, again, uh, other than the interior, I think I'm going to assume they're identical. Please, if you know yeah. this clock better, chime in and you know let us know. I'm going to start so off Randy, really Randy in the chat says that a few years ago, he got to interview the builder of the steam clock, which we just learned. I just learned by doing some research five minutes before this stream. His name is Raymond Saunders. In case anyone's curious. Well, Randy, tell we're going to throw some tell us what we're going to throw some learned. facts out here. Yeah, I was going to say we're going to throw some steam clock facts out. So whether you like it or not, you're going to learn both uh, some sketch up tips and a little bit more than you ever wanted to know about steam clocks. So <laughs> here's a here's a tip to start off with. And, and we've shared this before. When you bring an image into SketchUp and I just dragged it in, which imports it as an image, if you right click and use as material, if you explode this, what happens? Uh, let me go back to perspective for a second. Sometimes you bring an image in as a reference and then you group an object. If I group this and edit it, any materials you have are going to be um, not shown. And, and I can, <clears throat> let, me, let me show. So if I explode this, it makes it a material. So we have this image here. Because I exploded it, if I edit this, see how that image is gone and that's that's kind of a common thing that happens and you don't know why it happens but i'm going to undo till before i exploded this now i don't have to have this little extra line but i want to group this so i draw just any extra piece of geometry i group it i group it so that i can lock it that's just a personal preference but now when i draw something group it and edit the group as long as I didn't explode that image, I can still see it. So that's that's a little tip for you um, that you can still see the image. So I'm going to go straight on, turn perspective back off. And this is as close an image as I found. So I'm going to kind of trace this and use it as our reference. I'm going to turn, uh, let's say, I'm toggling x-ray mode on. And that makes it really easy to draw over and still be able to see our line work. Yeah, so what have you learned, Eric? What 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 do we know about this clock? Well, I think I'm going to kind of ruin it for some people who might have thought that this is historic. I mean, I'm just going to come right out swinging and say that this clock is actually built in 1977. I guess by today's standards, that would be considered old. Um, I wasn't even alive then, but it's met, it's modeled to look Victorian. And of course the steam power kind of insinuates that like maybe that's how they powered clocks back then, but this is actually more of a novelty um, than it is a function of, of needing of clocks, of needing steam to power the clocks. So mm. I don't know, I thought that was kind of cool. I think a lot of people would probably assume that it's historic when they walk past for the first time. Yeah, you could definitely assume so. Although I wonder how old this this part of town is referred to as Gas Town, and I wonder how old that is, and that might be a clue that unless it was imported from somewhere else, that it's not that old. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know Vancouver. I've been there quite a few times, but I don't know sort of the evolution quite so much. I know the rail yards are right next door. So this is where, you know, a lot of the industry was. And of course, if you look at the brick, just the way the use of brick and the style, sort of the late 1800s building style that you see, it's kind of similar to if you've been to Seattle, um, Pioneer, the Pioneer Square district. Um, there's also a lot of similar it's Pacific Northwest too. So you'll see a lot of same architecture in Portland as well. So you're just tracing right now. You put your x-ray mode on. Uh, I was reading comments, so I might have missed a little of that. Put your x-ray mode on so you can see that you're drawing over the top. That's something I love to tell people, too, because I'm often tracing site plans, you know, working in urban design, landscape architecture. So when you're tracing over stuff, being able to x-ray, it makes it, to me, so much easier to see. Whenever I see someone not doing that, I say, no, no, stop. 
stop, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you're making it more painful than need be. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm just tracing. I want to use follow me to create this, and then I will get rid of all but one side of it. Um, that... So, comment from Randy that Gas Town was actually named after Gassy Jack. I hope that his. I hope that was. <laughs> Because he worked in the gas industry and not because of uh, another reason that the nickname stuck. Gassy Jack. That is Gassy uh, Jack. a memorable. <laughs> and Transom came out. We were joking about this before the session, but he's already pulled out the steam. What, what, how to make this a steampunk clock. And we were all debating. So you can put your comments in as far as how to go from steam clock to steampunk. Um, we, I said Mohawk, obviously brightly colored. What, what were you guys? We can come back at the end. We can come back and punkify it once the actual, <laughs> if we have time. Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, um, we didn't do our usual welcome intro, so yeah, by all means, chime in where you're coming from. It, it's nice to see some uh, some of our familiar friends back to join us after our little hiatus. Um, oh, if I drop the ball on that, that's because I'm new here. So I can say where everyone's coming from. We know Transom's from Washington. We've got someone from Brazil. That's, nice. I mean, it's funny because I want to say, wow, all the way from Brazil. But then again, logging on, I don't think they had to do any more work than we did, did they? <laughs> well, nor are they in like the worst time zone. Because like when we get some, you know, some of our friends from, I don't know, let's say Australia or India or something. Mm -hmm. They're like, cheers to you. And <laughs> Sorry, you're not sleeping tonight. <laughs> We've got someone from Norway. We know Dave R is East Coast, so we already said welcome, Dave R. You've got so you've got you've got Dave watching. So no <clears> pressure <throat> if you didn't know if you didn't see that he's watching and and commenting. Um, I will simply say that because you have been at many of the past ones, we did miss you this year at base camp. Uh, you knew that, but I'll say it. Uh, so because oh, and Dave, Dave corrected me. He said Minnesota. Regulars. I said East Coast. So oh. I stand corrected. Yeah, you yeah. Do. I should, should. I should know. See, he didn't come after wow. me. He came after you. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> okay. I, Costa I'm, Rica, India. Okay, nice. I think I'm done. I think we. I think we're pretty well represented here for That's with, awesome. um, a, this great group. I will we'll do these uh, these whistles later, but since I'm here tracing, I figured I would just you know do some of this while we're here. And uh, how, you, so you're going to come back and add more detail because these are obviously arcs, but you're just kind of giving it right well, because it's a rounded. Uh, for now, uh, not having a, a ton of detail. Yes, I'm I'm making some assumptions, and I'm giving just a. Mm a basic uh framework to draw my arcs on to start i see you're just kind of blocking it out and then you're coming in and adding the arcs <clears> within <throat> that sort of sharp corners you're kind of rounding those corners off yeah nice making some of this up the other thing is uh this is one of those areas where you unless you really were modeling this for the detail, you got to be careful to be like, why would I put a ton of detail in the top of that thing? That's, I can't see once I, you know, so, uh, I, in fact, I'm going to turn a, just because I'm going to turn some of my arcs down here. So this one will, will make these like eight sided. It's not going to matter at the scale we're doing, but, just as a sort of best practice, I will turn my segments down just a little bit. That one probably can get away with six. It's kind of shallow. All right. So let's come back to here. I think that's about as much detail as we'll need to start with. And we should be able to start with this. And then build from there. Uh, I need to grab this one. So 
So, um, I didn't get to talk to you much, Eric, about because Eric presented with our friend Daniel Tal, and they did this co-presenting of um, some landscape. And if you know Daniel, uh, then you you might know that he's pretty easygoing. And one of the things that Eric's been laughing about over the past month, laughs last groaning about, is that he can't pin Daniel down to like, hey, let's let's like solidify the way we're going to present. But so it was kind of off the cuff, but how did it go? Do tell us like what, what, what'd you cover there? Yeah, that was a, that was a learning experience. I, I felt like base camp, I mean, the pressure of, of us being, um, I don't know, representing SketchUp and then having, knowing that we're also presenting in the company of the most skillful, you know, experienced modelers in the world. It, to me, I was like, well, we should prepare something, right? I mean, obviously, I could just come up and talk about what I know, but I was like, oh, we should prepare. Uh, but yeah, Daniel yeah, Daniel works differently. He just, it just all comes out in real time. And uh, it's a skill. It's a skill. <laughs> and it turned out I was a little concerned, you know, because I'm a planner. And I was like, we should probably, you know, know, know what, who's going to say what. And it turns out that I was fighting a losing battle. And I finally gave up and said, all right, let's just roll with it. And it turned out that it was great. We got a lot of comments after I said, oh, you guys present really well together. And I was nice. like, oh, good. So yeah, couldn't be happier. I think that's kind of the experience. Um, and for those that, I'm sorry for those that didn't go, you, you're going to hear us talk about it because I think that this, it's been four years in the making. So it's almost like, right, we're all, we all were looking forward to it. We're all thinking now about the next one. So yeah, for me, it was like, that that experience where I went into it thinking, oh, okay, well, well I don't know how this is going to go. That's the whole week went with like like that, right? I don't know about you, Tyson, but like everything went better than expected. And I think that's kind of a rare experience for such a complex event um, with so many moving pieces and in a different country. Uh, it was so, so much fun. And I, I will reiterate, um, sorry that we're like we'll be like a broken record uh if you couldn't make it um so hopefully we can talk about some of the things that might be useful um but yeah the, because i've been to enough of these now that the way it all comes together i i wasn't surprised at that but it's still um uh, so fun to see it actually in you know finally do so I must be a little off square. I better be careful here. So what are you doing, Tyson? Since we're talking about base camp, I'm, I'm watching you, but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your next steps are so we can think about where you're going with this. I am drawing <clears throat> a square because again, I'm assuming this clock is, is uh, square. And let me just draw, let's say a 30 by 30. It won't matter the size of it. Uh, I've drawn the profile and then uh, should be no big surprise to anybody who knows uh, SketchUp decently well that I'm going to use that as a follow me profile to create the full shape of the clock. We're going to do 80% of the work right now. Um, I just need to get this square in line. So I'll use a little inference locking. With Dave, this I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to interrupt you because Dave is telling you to draw the square from that central point. And I think that's probably what using the modifier is that would that work? Uh, yeah, so know, that's what he's referring to. So that that's a good suggestion as well. So what if uh, if you look down here in the modifier toggle select sender, I could just hover over here, come down. And then if I toggle option, I should be able to draw from the center mm -hmm. and draw a square just like that. Yeah. So, you know, it's center and you don't have to move it and then try to like line it up again. You know, it's, you know, it's great about uh, the feedback on these. It's like, I, I know that I know it, but I don't use it often enough that I, I use it regularly. That's a, that's a perfect. Um, so as always, uh, a dozen ways to do everything. Good suggestion. But if we that... drawn it correctly, <laughs> we should be able to. Oh, wow. What did you just do? You just like went from flat to looks like, like not clock, flat, right? No, no, no. Go back and do that again. All so, right. Are you using follow me around a square? Of course. 
I, why would Fo I not think to do it that way? Follow me. Oh. Uh, follow me around any object. Right. Uh, again, yeah, if you, just if always you, doing circles. If you yeah. haven't used follow me, we could we could do it also. You know, just as another example, this one will do six sides. But yeah, oh it's my gosh. creating a lathe shape for our clock. So we get this really cool. And in our case, let's go back and we just want a square. Just make sure it's centered on the square, which was why I was moving this to the center or why Dave's suggestion was such a good one. So grab that. You go to follow me, which I'm just using a keyboard shortcut. Click on uh, so path. Uh, that's offset. Sorry. Follow me. <laughs> Ah, I can't. <laughs> I know talking and modeling at the same time is not easy. Well, it, and and yeah, uh, wow. actually, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yay, we're we're a ton of the way there, right? So here's what we want to do next. We've got that. It looks good. If we were wanted to be more careful, of course. Um, and maybe by looking at this in comparison, I might be like, eh, maybe it looks a little fat to me. I could uh, tweak this, but I, I don't, we'll, we'll leave it kind of as is. I could tweak, I could grab this side and bring it in just a little bit. Maybe I didn't draw anything to scale to start, so. Lawrence is asking if you left that top piece off on purpose. And I think you did, right? Because you're going to use Over a here. circle, follow me, instead of a square, follow that me on that one. Correct. I absolutely left that uh, off on purpose because that being a cylinder, you're right. We're going to use follow me with a circle. Yeah. Nice. But, and then I'm gonna I, I'm gonna jump I'm gonna jump the gun only because uh, Chris Rosewarn, who unfo unfortunately couldn't make it to uh oh, base camp after you. all i know which we were so excited i proctored his i was proctoring his session but luckily we had alex schreier uh who hopefully ever, most people on this chat know who he is and he he did the the components uh course instead of chris rosewarn and and of course you know after seeing that it just in watching chris rosewarn work it's just amazing to see his use of of making components and mirroring them copying them arraying them um I just see when I see four sides, it just of course makes me think like, where does the, at what point do you bring components into your process, Tyson? I'm going to do it immediately. Ah, so there you go. Okay, so you were, grab, you were going there already. We're going to grab all of that. And oh, I got to be careful here. So you can see I'm losing some of my corners. So let me make sure I'm not doing, I thought I'd get away with that. Some of these are well. Oh, see, it's it's these. Th let me uh, let me draw a few edges in here that I should have been aware of. But ah, uh, you're yeah. losing that face. Yeah, because you can't. You need to break that face so it's not connected. Um, actually, <laughs> yeah, there was a a presentation I did on the Vertex tools. We could break this up using a plugin. That's um, donut. It, it's split tools by Tig, and it and it's it's for a different purpose. But it would actually draw these in for us. But th there's not so many here, and I, I don't know if I have that plugin installed. So we we'll just quickly draw these out. And, and uh, don't forget that little one on the bottom there. You're That's right. a tiny little one. Good yeah. call. <laughs> have you met Have you met Tig? Has he come to any of the base camps? If he I think he has. I I don't know that I've met him though. Um, personally. Yeah, he's got some great extensions. Uh, Just gotta hey. love our our development our developer community. You know. For but, the, for those that, oh, go ahead, Tyson. Sorry. Oh no no. Oh, I was just speaking of like when at the like at base camp, people get to see meet Enroth and Chris Fulmer and Tom Tom in person. And it's like, we're such all geeks because it's like, oh, can I get a picture with you? Oh, can I get your 
Oh, autograph. Right. Oh, oh my gosh, you know, finally. And I know Dave R, who's um, who's on this chat as well. I mean, he, the, the the sages as well. It's like because you see their names in the forums over and over and over again. You finally get to meet them, and it's it's so exciting. There are enough of these. I'm just going to show. I'm I'm going to see if this would work. So this is the split tools. If I select this surface and hit that, it's gonna it's gonna divide those corners, and that's again typically used for something else, but. Uh, I'm running into enough of these small ones that let's go ahead and and uh, use that. So I'll grab that one, split, so it just splits them for me. So, You've got your first save comment of the oh, day. Oh, snap. <laughs> Lawrence, for the win, I think, I, yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I don't call. have the sound effect Good button call. that Matt has. <laughs> uh, and And that's appropriate since I'm using uh extensions at this point and you're absolutely right that's where things go a little haywire so let's uh let's save this model phew that's a close one <laughs> just in the nick of time all right let's see i there there might be one or two here that i've missed but let's find out I'm going to jump in here, grab all this and delete and see what surfaces we missed. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks pretty good. Maybe we actually got what we needed and this nice extra line. Sweet. All right. Let's make this component. Just one fourth of it. Ah, uh, are you naming it? That's that's good practice. I was. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to the punch. Oh my gosh! And you, it's so funny. Do not do that. I know. When we do these live model sessions, there's like no tags. There's like no naming, and we just go for it. And it's. But we also want to teach our users like best practices, folks. All right. So we are set up to build out the details <laughs> so here is um, here's an interesting question as far as the approach that we're taking so if uh, we come in here let me see if I can zoom in to some of the details here when you create a component model like this some of the the way that you will approach it will be obvious and by that i mean the face of the clock well that's just going to be directly on the face of our clock over here no 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 question the thing that can be interesting though is the corners because when you do a corner you in our case we can either just put all of our detail components on one side and it will replicate on each corner and we can make it work or we can continue to split it up at the corner. Anyway, it's it's an interesting piece that I, I feel like doesn't always have uh, you know it's situational as so many things are. I don't know. So if people as we progress, if people have a different approach or think like, oh, I would have done the you know some of this a little differently, I'd be curious to see what. Uh, what that would be let's just start here at the base and because that's easy and then start working our way up here's an example of it's not perfectly uniform as long as like vents non-vent but for now at least we'll treat it as though it were i think for the sake of today's model you're okay treating those as <laughs> the same i i suspect we have a we'll forgiving right. audience they'll they, we we can use our imaginations as well to fill in any blanks. Here's another here's another uh, bit of component. I'm inside my component now. I'm t uh, working on raw geometry. I want to be able to. So I'm going to take this selection, 
curiously it didn't grab this why is this separate we must have missed see that little bit we missed we did miss one Yoink. we'll fix that so that we have I'm gonna select all this and I'm gonna group it and I'm gonna do that so that I can draw on top of it easily but I'm still within the, the larger component for me that's helpful and then when I want to I'll actually go inside that group and may and uh, work on the geometry now I know some people um, would probably you know turtles all the way down make this a component instead of a group personal preference maybe I'm lazy maybe I just don't want to show my bad naming habits pick your reason <laughs> So down here, where were we? Uh, I'm gonna draw something like this and just scale it in. That way I keep it centered because I don't know how big it is. Something like that. Lots of ways to do this. I'll just making it up kind of but let's make this a component. And then Dave R is happy to see you using components. Oh, as he's a fan. I hear, I hear he's a fan of components. <laughs> I've heard that too. And as long as we're making uh, somebody happy, even if it's Dave, then we're doing all right. We tease, he knows, I, I, we're all of us. You, you're not a fan of SketchUp without being a fan of components. Um, like I say, are you a components a la turtles all the way down kind of person? Or are you a uh, hybrid components groups type of person? And, and, in, and if you're new to SketchUp, you'll, you'll often ask, well, when would you use either? And the answer is you kind of develop your own habits. There are some best practices, but you kind of just, we all, we all do a little bit of our own. You know what I'm going to do? I need to uh, take one of these and drop it over here so that I can have it near my image reference. Group that, move it off to the side. I start to build my bone yard as I do. That's my, uh, <laughs> that's, if, if, if Dave or other people are known for components, I'm known for my bone yards, <laughs> <laughs> right? And that way I can come in and uh, kind of roughly get this in the right position to draw something here. So you got one comment when we were, we did a little side chat. So, you know, we were giving you a hard time. Tyson and I was telling them that it's um, my job to give you a hard time. And then, and then they said, oh, don't worry. Tyson's doing a great job. And then you got a full steam ahead, you know, so to continue. So yeah, full steam ahead. Okay. So let's... We've got a full steam ahead. Um, we're more, <laughs> more clock puns. Um, Out with it. Folks. Let's, let's just, yeah, get those, get those rolling. Um, let's, let's. <laughs> Also, um, it's not your job, Eric. It's just your sort of, you're going above and beyond and giving me a hard time always. I mean, that, that, let's just give you credit where due. I don't think you get paid extra for giving me a hard time, but you do it anyway. Props to you. No, I'm a... I'm, I'm, we're trainers. We, we have a built in support network where to like, that's in our DNA. We want to see people succeed. So if I, if any time, any hard times is with the, it then within the larger framework of how can I improve your skills by joshing you a little bit in the process? Okay. What happened? I have broken my component. Yeah, what are you connection. doing? I should be seeing this over here. But for some reason, I'm not. Did you copy it from inside? Because remember, you had a group inside of a component. You didn't actually grab the group. I may though, have grabbed, yeah. 
Um, but you, you can know what? check the entity info. And I'll tell you. I, I think you're right about that, Eric. Uh, now, now it should still work, but just to be sure, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy it. So I didn't lose necessarily that much work. And let's just try over here. Let's grab this again. Oh, did you copy that uh, your little um, internal glass face before you moved it so you can paste it back in? I did. So if I go in here, Good. I'm going to paste this. And you can see that's, you know, so there you no go. I can, yeah, I can. It looks like it's good now. No, uh, no harm done or not much harm done. There we go. We're back on track. The... What are you, how are you centering it? Um, when you, when you pasted that back in, what was your trick to make sure that that stayed centered? Well, that's a little thing we call inference locking. And it's one of my favorite, favorite things about SketchUp. Every other program I ever work in, some of them have uh, inferencing of various sorts, but nothing quite like SketchUp inferences. So when I put this back in and I didn't know exactly where to go, all I had to do is say, I want this centered. So I'm going to grab this and move it by that center point, lock that red direction with the shift key, and then hover over some other center point here. See, um, you make it look easy. We, I didn't even see that you do that. It's like magic. Uh, it's so second nature once you've done it, you know. Uh, we all do it just sort of by default. So uh, Some comments for you. Uh, I asked for some clock puns. Transom says that he's cuckoo for this clock that you're building. So... <laughs> uh good keep them cuckoo for yeah don't want to lose don't want to lose track of those thank you handsome <laughs> this one i'm going to grab this and again i could split this with that that uh just manually but i want to move it back if you look at this image i don't know if you can see it sort of uh angled in but because this is a simple rectangle i should be able to move this and lock it in the green direction and that will build out those auto fold lines for me so pull that back something like that barry is concerned about your progress he says the clock is ticking on this one tyson <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> no pressure <laughs> I love it. Ah, I love it. And um, this, the way it looks, it looks like partially how we uh, drew this and didn't have an exact reference. I think that clock face is square too, and this clearly is not. Um, we can fix this still right now if we wanted to make it square. And again, uh, so I'm going to just say, how long is that? Four feet and 10 inches. And again, this is bigger than it will be. We'll scale it down later. Um, I'm going to grab that line. It doesn't matter what it is. Move it over here to the side. Make sure I'm rotating it in the green. And then I'm just going to grab all of this stuff. Make sure I'm moving from the same line I want to match up. Lock it and move it there that way i know those edges are the same uh, we have a, our square face i think that i think we're seeing a square face so we're going to proceed like it like it is it's your model that's you're right about that you can change it if you want i mean no one's gonna nothing no one can do anything about it we just have I to watch we're helpless we're that, along for the ride <laughs> You could all drop off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't model us exactly, we're we're gone. We're all gone. Okay. So one mistake and, and we're off. Uh, let's see. It looks like this clock face goes pretty close to the edge of that bevel. So we'll just do that. 
something like that and then I'll insert it in a couple times and again this is uh this is kind of your just where should i make that clock face directly part of the raw geometry should i group it separately um sometimes it's not obvious and sometimes you come back later and you're like i wish i had i will probably just make it part integral to the face i i don't think we need to keep it separate and then so i'm gonna use some inference locking to put it right there in the center and okay look how i thought i made this square i clearly did not what's going on i must have used the wrong edge or something right but you, you can see that you too. weren't using me measure yeah you weren't using actual like dimensions you were just kind of looking at it and trying to draw it square so how would you fix that then if you if that bugged you and you wanted it square without a ton of redo let me check something i think yeah see what i did is i grabbed like this line but i didn't use that as my reference so um this time let me let me go back let me erase that out this time i'm going to make sure i'm got the right edge uh this one let's use this one because that inside i want to be square so that one i think well is that hold on hold on let me five foot three and some change five foot nine and some change yeah if we make those two lines the same it should be square so i must have referenced the wrong one previously and I'm sure somebody out there caught that and was like, ha ha, it's coming back to bite ya. And it did. So I'm going to grab that, that and move it. That up. was hard to tell that it's not square, though. So I'd be it's surprised. It was close, right? It was close. It was close. It looks, from a distance, it looks square. All right. There you go. Look at how you moved it up like that. Magic. So we fixed that. Now if we draw our circle from the center that sure looks better something like that and I am going to turn that one up let's say 48 sides or maybe 60 or something no, we'll stick with 48 I still want I still want a number that's nicely divisible by 12 for I hope obvious reasons coming up because uh, we're gonna have to divide this up into our time pieces. Speaking so of time, Calific Go uh, Kegification says that if you do a good job modeling this clock, um, it's a Doctor Who reference, which I don't know, but you might become a Time Lord after this at the end. So Ooh. Are, you familiar, are you familiar with Doctor Who? I just know Doctor Who is a Time Lord. I, I would say he... that if you... I would say I my, my reference went to Time Bandits, if anyone's seen Time <laughs> Bandits. Uh, that movie I grew up on, by the way, if it, that'll date me. Uh, it's My parents should not have let me see that movie when I was little. It's really weird. It's Terry so weird. Gillum, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a weird one. Boy, you need Jody in here to like, I, I saw that so long ago. I do not have, um, wow, I, d I don't remember the details on that one. But yeah, Time Lord, Time Bandits. Oh, good. I've got Barry says he loves Time Bandits too. Okay, so everyone on the thread, if you haven't seen Time Bandits, go watch that tonight when you're home, and then you can either really? thank me or be mad at me later for the reference. I right, like, does it age that well? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's. That. I don't know if we need that. Okay, I I'm sorry. Sometimes when I'm sort of like I mumble to myself. I don't know. I some of us who uh, who just spend time modeling, um, I, I will just be mumbling to myself. Well, do I want to do it that way? Do I want to sort of just talk in? <laughs> okay, let's see. How are we doing? That looks okay.
Um, if we can soften these later, if I see that and I want to, you know, fix that from the beginning, I might grab some, grab this and it's for whatever reason got broken up. So I might grab it and weld it. I've got that on a keyboard shortcut. Yeah. And I, it was um, kind of interesting to see that a lot of people um, aren't familiar with that 2022 includes weld natively um, for those that are used to using the extension and swear by that the extension. So it was Which, fun to share that with people. Yeah. That, uh, um, it, the extension was great. It was so nice to have. So it's just, it's natively in there now. You can grab a, a series of edges and I could right click and weld them somewhere in here. Weld edges. But that one's useful enough. I've put it on a keyboard shortcut. Yeah. You don't always, I could weld this whole thing together, but I want a little bit of delineation on these edges. But yeah, the weld is, uh, is, is useful to have. So a comment from Daniel okay. before you before you keep going, if it's okay, because you were pulling, you were pushing and pulling the, I think you were pushing actually the uh, clock face, the, what would you call that? Not a bezel, but the dial around it. Uh -huh. Would you, would you paint those first before you would push those in or group them so that you can then paint the whole thing? Or is this intended, you don't really, you're not thinking about materials because you're just modeling the clock at this point. Um, so uh, it, are we talking about these pieces here? And that yeah, exactly. When you were pushing those in, <clears throat> the question is, is would you paint that first before you push it so you don't have to paint all of the edges surrounding it? Or, you know, are you just kind of ignoring that because we're not doing materials for this one? Well, and I, I think I understand why the question is. It's a great question. So thank you. Um, let's, let's do a little example of I could paint them afterwards. And let's just say I've, I've got a few default colors here, but you can see that I'm painting each one of these. It's not mm -hmm. hard, but it's a little bit of like just being conscious of painting what we call those bezels. Whereas if I have painted them prior, then I might inherit some of that from the beginning. So if I had that and that uh, painted prior and then we paint the clock uh, something different then when I pull uh, in this case it's inheriting this color um, ah the face color yeah and, or the and, interface I mean and uh, for me honestly uh, part of the reason why I don't do that is because I don't always correctly anticipate which of the it, it does inherit so it's not a bad suggestion by any means but i don't always correctly anticipate which color uh is kept when you pull um and so also in this case i am just sort of modeling along but that i hope that makes sense because it is a great suggestion to be like you know you can save yourself a little bit of effort if you can anticipate um that color from the beginning yeah you, yeah okay it might be it might be that you're good enough that you're like i remember i know that i want only so it'll be easier for me to paint just these two flat colors and then i mm -hmm. right so if you do that often enough and we'll, let's just leave that as is if you do that often enough it yeah no that's a really interesting suggestion Hey, did you want to save um, before we go on? Because you've been making some good progress here. I'm liking where this is going. Thanks. I'll, I'll I save. Would hate, I would hate for you to lose anything. I'll save. Yeah. Um, let's see. We are not a full hour in, and I feel like, well, there's our clock, right? That's the beauty of, of some of this. Let's, let's tackle this corner just to show... Um, why I brought it up at the beginning as kind of like a challenging, not challenging, but like you could approach it in some different ways. So this is what I'm going to do. And I'll be curious if people would do it differently. Okay. So we have this, these, this detail here is what I'm talking about. And rather than build it and 
embed it in the corner of uh, both corners. Again, we have the luxury in this case that uh, we have a symmetrical clock. So I'm gonna build it on the outside and just put it on one corner and we're gonna get that on all of our corners. Uh, and I think that will just make it simpler to model and to manage. So that's gonna be my approach on this one. But uh, as, uh, as always, open to suggestions. No, we're here to learn. So I'm not claiming I'm not claiming this is the best way, though. I'm just claiming that's why I I'm approaching it this way, and I could be wrong. I weird as it seems, my old friend, I'm sometimes wrong. I did. I know it's hard to. It's so weird, but it turns out it's true. <laughs> All right, so I'll tell you what else we're going to do. Where's my halfway mark? I'm going to take that, make that a component. And mirror it. Because, as we see over here, it is... So we're just doing, we're just doing half of this. So speaking of going back in time, uh, I learned a fun fact at base camp because we had these little screens and they just had these random facts. And it said that um, you can undo up to 100 times, right? Is that, yeah. is that what you remember? <clears throat> that is the default setting you can undo more than that if you uh up or you can do less than that if you uh want but yes default 100 undos i've been singing um the rolling stones time is on my side in my head the last five <laughs> minutes or so so if i missed anything you said that's why why aren't you singing it out loud Come on. It's not fair to our audience uh, <laughs> to do that. Okay. Uh, let's make six sides. We do not want a bunch of detail uh, in our arcs on this one, but I'm going to add just a little bit of detail on this one, something like that. Wondering what that flower is on the clock for the Pacific Northwest landscape dorks out there like myself. It almost looks like dogwood. I'd be curious if anyone knows the answer to that. Do you have dogwood up in the Pacific? I mean, I, I, I associate well, we, that with the, the South. Oh yeah, dogwoods are huge up here in the Pacific Northwest. You get them as trees and you get them as shrubs. You get red twig dogwood, which is fun because it loses its leaves and you get these really cool red branches. Uh, you also have just the flowering dogwoods, like the, the street trees, like that you see around town. Ooh, look nice. at that. That looks nice. Nice. Um, all right, all right, all right. Good, good. Oh, Randy confirmed that he thinks it's dogwood as well. So, oh, hey. nice. Dogwood for the win. Dogwood. You are clever. Sometimes, Eric. You know what you're talking about. Sometimes. We are here to learn. Um, it doesn't have to be just SketchUp modeling tips. I feel like if you've walked away with another life lesson or a movie fact, <laughs> then that's all, all, the more, that's... all the more better. Yeah. Um, this is going to infuriate... Um... I, I have watched intermittently Doctor Who, but I have never, uh, like, you know, jumped into it as fully. And I, I always enjoyed it. But when it, we talk about a Time Lord, I'm more familiar, actually, with the parody of Doctor Who that's in Phineas and Ferb and the Time Lords. There's a uh, very sub-side plot. Oh, you know what? It's not even in Phineas and Ferb. It's in the Phineas and Ferb spinoff. Milo Murphy's Law. See how... Okay, I'm sorry. I should not have gone there. <laughs> oh, we got we, we got him wound up. Okay. Get sorry, it? everybody. Get it? 
Yeah. Sorry. Somebody jump in with some facts about Doctor Who to salvage the bad reference I just... Hey, we've got Studio RT Cool joining us. It's great to see him in person. Thanks yeah. for coming. Hope your presentation went well as well. Uh, yeah, I heard it. I heard it rocked. Matched photo. Right? You know yeah. what? All right, I'm going to vent for a second, everybody. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm going to do it because the thing about Basecamp that I so... And, and, and this is the part where it's like, even if you didn't... If you didn't get to come to base camp, those of us who did, and especially those of us who work base camp, everybody I worked with and, and, uh, and all the presentations that you want to see, you hardly get to see any when you're, when you're working base camp. Uh, I wanted to see that match photo presentation for very much sure. I was like, oh, I definitely know that I can improve my game on that. Uh, tool and then I need to understand it better but I'm sure I was working some other presentation uh, I'm sorry we could not see it Wanted to. oh yeah just too many I I when I I had to both thank and uh, I when people came to mind I was like thank you thank you before the presentation started because I was like you had to choose you had to give up some amazing presentations to mm -hmm. come to mind so I was like, that's cool. So we got Sergey from France. So bonjour. Omar says he did go to Tyson's Vertex Tools presentation, and it was fantastic. Fan <laughs> I can't speak. Fantastic. Because I was thinking spandex in my head right as I was saying <laughs> fantastic, because that's what you put in your title. Yeah. And that's why I couldn't. That's why I choked on that word. Omar, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um... yeah. <clears throat> we're gonna uh hopefully hear some more from omar uh in the future he's got some interesting stuff he works on as well oh is this the oh is this the i was gonna say i recognize omar the name yeah Alderaan, yeah yeah on right mm -hmm. correct me but, that's some yeah. cool stuff i'm gonna bring this in i don't know again this is not scale so i'll just bring it in that way one and a half one so it's somewhat embedded and then let's just finally cut that out. Go inside here so you, and paste it. Yeah, you were drawing on yeah, you were drawing on the outside and now you're ready to bring it in. Yeah. And, oh, and nice. you can see by pasting right in the corner there, but because of the symmetry, it does what we need. And that's why we, we knew we'd get away with this approach. It wouldn't work in every case. Uh, if this was even a rectangle and not a square, then we'd have to kind of uh, use a little bit different approach or at least embed it differently. But in our case, we get to do that. And we're going to reuse that down here because we can. So take that, move it. Let's see. Um, one of the things um, that we could do, Eric, you uh, in a future live mo uh, live modeling session, I did do a presentation on vertex tools, and I did call it spandex tools as a bit of a uh, clickbaity title. <laughs> Or at least a silly title, um, but yeah, it, it'd be interesting if if we kind of took some of our base camp presentations and we could bring them into these live models. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I because here's the thing, and I'm going to say this to I, it was a comment that actually was asked at the beginning uh, when we were first mentioning um, Vancouver and the Steam Clock and Base Camp, and someone said, "Did you record them?" And that's been mm -hmm. sort of it's been it's it's been a hard i don't like telling people the answer to that which is no. no you know we we made the choice you know as a sketchup group um or i'm not sure we made the choice the choice was made to not record them and uh 
And there, this is why why it's important that we do find ways to bring that information back, even if it's in pieces or even if it's in something like what you just suggested, Tyson. There's just so much to share, so much to pass along. Any way we can. <clears throat> Definitely. Hundo P agree. Um, so yeah, if y'all want to spend some time just on Vertex tools, uh, a little more sort of how they work session, we could do that sometime in the future. And Eric's Eric did a bunch of on landscaping, so. Uh, you did that on, you said that on purpose to get me riled up, didn't you? you I you just called okay, it, that was you just slip. called it landscaping. Freudian slip. That was a slip. That was not, I, 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 when I push your buttons, I want to do so very consciously. That one was a slip. Eric is, su oh my goodness, everybody out there. If you, uh, if you want to know, call it landscaping, not landscape design, landscape architecture. Landscaping is cutting the grass, according to Eric. And if you call what he does landscaping, he gets unhappy <laughs> nothing wrong with nothing wrong with landscape maintenance not docking it we need this we need that it's important it's a part of the process but it's, yeah you're right it's not i didn't go to four-year degree on top of three more years of college to trim shrubs i could have i could have <laughs> saved my money and my time oh i am getting way too, um I, i'm getting lost in the details and in our like just banter I, uh, I'm getting, I, this is the point Sorry, where you're like, can... okay, no, I, I'm, I, I don't know. Like it happens, right? I'm like, well, that's, this is a, this is a bit of a different detail. How do I, should I did it then? Like, ah, for the purposes of this model, stop it. Just stop it. Yeah, you're kind of fussing a lot here. I, I would just put I, something I in and then move to the next step. And we can always come back in at the end and say, oh, we've got time. Let me now fuss. Right. Save the fuss towards. Um, well, the it, end it, of the process. And as we we know from other models, there's really you don't come back and have time, but I'm very much fussing. So let me stop that. Let me just stop doing that. Let me that and then we'll take this. Definitely need to stop fussing. And I'll mirror, mirror this down. I think you're lost in your task. Uh, if you're like me, you probably think that time flies uh, when you're having fun. So that it does. Oh, I hope you're having fun here. It oh, does. It does fly when you're having fun. I'm having lots of fun. And I. I mean, I apologize. One of the things that's fun about these type of things is getting lost in the details. Like it is, it is enjoyable, right? Like that is part of the fun. But yeah, let, because let, you can, let's, you can just, yeah, <laughs> let's get lost Agreed. in some other details. Okay. Now, as you brought up the flowers, we, we, we should do the flowers because uh, those are prominent part of the face of the clock. Okay. I'm I'm questioning whether I want to do like whether I want to attempt to make we just brought up vertex tools and I could attempt to use vertex tools to create some more interesting flowers or we could obviously just make some some things that look from a distance like they are. I'm going to try very briefly to make uh, some flowers with vertex tools so that we have a little more detail. But Eric, I want you to call me out. Call me out if in just five or 10 minutes, I am like way lost in the weeds and not making progress. Tell me to stop. Okay. Call me out. Tell me just bail out of it. Just bail out. <laughs> All right. I feel like chopped where I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and open up your extension and time starts no. now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For chopped fans out there. Um, so, uh, the things that I, this should be, this should be fairly straightforward. So if I do, um, I, I, 
we shouldn't even need to do that much uh, editing uh, in Vertex. If I do this, this, and then I'm going to split this. Uh, you know what, I better keep part of the thing that you want to maintain in, in when using vertex tools are quads and um, I need uh, I'm not splitting this up exactly as like might result in clean geometry, but it probably is not going to matter for as small and simple as these are. So we're just going to let it be. I'm going to see if I can pull that out something like that I'm actually modeling these wrong right the, instead of the indent oh see I I'll, I'm already getting lost in the weeds because I want to I want to do it better I want to do it right but if I <laughs> you know what this is Just where I would want to jump in and 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 collaboratively model with you, you know, in real time so that we could say, I'll do the flowers. <laughs> you do, I want to see how you do the letters, to be honest with you. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what everybody else says, but how would you do the, the clock hands and the rest of the face? And so obviously, uh, if you want to finish the flowers, please, uh, please do. <laughs> okay. The letters is a good, good question. So we're going to do that. Um, here's the problem. I just taught a class on this, but I taught a class that's like kind of the basics of like, here's, you know, vertex tools. I prepared one or two examples. I'm not good at them. I'm not good at like, I'm not fluid at looking at an object and being like, okay, I know how I'd approach it. So every time I do something like this, I have to make up and, and make it wrong. The first four attempts and then maybe get somewhere close. But that's that's part of what's going on here. So I'm like, how would I build this um, so that I, you know, all right, but I, 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 I've got two minutes of my allotted like experimental time left. Okay, so um, that looks really weird, but we're going to see if it, if we can make it uh, salvageable. Because this is this is ugly quad geometry, vertex geometry, but um, if we subdivide it, it still might give us something close. <laughs> and Eric's like, "You idiot! What have you done? You absolute oh, I, idiot!" I'm I'm not going to say anything for this round. I'm going to wait till your time go is up on. before I, before I chime back in. Get oh, it. Go Clark. on, go sure. on, get it out. Let's hear it. <laughs> no, I don't want to interrupt you. You're doing, you're doing great. So you just keep going. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Kegification asks why, why don't you use the image as a texture? So that way you're actually just tracing the leaf and letting the depth be sort of an illusion from the, the image itself. Um, <clears throat> absolutely, right? Like, and that depends on the level of detail, whether you want geometry or whether the image itself communicates enough. And I have no good reason other than I just wanted to see if this would work. So I'm gonna bring up subdivide tools um uh to uh to save to divide this <laughs> thank you i always say before i run any sort of complex extension just because they all operate differently under the hood and i'm going to let's see if we um crease just a few of these edges, if we can get a little more uh, shape. So 
looks like some voodoo magic. I, I, I'll just have to trust that you know where it's going. Ooh, that was cool. All right, so uh, I, I've got some weird... I'm not going to fix it. Um, I've got some weird geometry in there. Uh, we're... I, <laughs> We'll leave it. We'll leave it alone. We'll leave it alone. Um, I I didn't crease the other side of this, and uh, there's some other things that are kind of ugly about this. So I'll just acknowledge that it's pretty ugly, and and uh, throw a texture on it and pretend like that's what we intended to do. But. <laughs> Transom says it looks great, so I think I, that that's all. I think that's all the confirmation that you need. So I knew better. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I knew. I I knew better than to come in here and like try to freeform some vertex tools where I I don't I haven't experimented. Oh well. Where's a Where's a green, a deep green, and uh, let's so, keep going. Speaking of color, question for you, if you don't mind. This is just a personal one. Uh, do you model with your sun and shade settings turned on or off? Or does it matter? I rarely model with... I, I uh, it, Probably off, most often. Hmm. Um, but then I toggle it on. But I don't need the feedback, for sure, right? Like, not, not like a real world scenario i found that the colors depending on your sun sh sun s shade settings it's kind of a tongue twister there uh it can change the way that your colors look like they're being applied so you may have to go darker or lighter um or adjust your sun settings so it's to me it's a there's a relationship between the color palette and the light source that is very true you're absolutely correct on that um, so if you are using materials more than, than I am, that's probably a, a really important consideration. All right, let's throw this back here and pretend like it looks amazing and is exactly what we wanted, despite that it is not. But from a distance, it will look fine from a distance. We were talking about songs earlier, right? You know, breaking yeah. some Bette Midler. Oh, I know you lost me there. <laughs> isn't that isn't that the song? Isn't it a Bette Midler song? I wish I could say. Maybe someone in the chat can <laughs> pipe in. All right. Um That reminds me, my daughter was watching Hocus Pocus the other day. That's Bette Midler and that, Sarah Jessica Parker. Go. Who was yeah. the Who was the last? I never saw that, so I don't know. I can't remember who the last witch is I in that one. Remember. I want to say Selma Blair, but I don't think that's right. I don't think so. I either. could look it up. I haven't seen that in a while. So Lauren says that shadows add a lot of processing power. I agree. I, I was trying to be clear with my saying, I, not to turn shadows on, but to turn use sun and shade settings on. So what you're getting is you're getting the light source, but you're not getting the shadows cast, which I totally agree. I don't model with my shadows on. Um, that's only for when you're ready to output. And Daniel says that I wait until I'm going to start my render and then adjust the color because obviously the the rendering affects uh, you want it to look right in the rendering result. Yeah. Transom is asking you to hum a few bars from the Bette Midler song you just referenced. I said I wouldn't <laughs> sing, but if you want to. You don't want me to. From a distance. Da, da, de, da, da, da. I don't know the words very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh no uh let's make that uh let's make this a component if i haven't already maybe i have i have oh yeah i just named it leaves i just did that the request to for singing 
was like so no that I forget that I even uh Let me know when you're ready for some more steam clock. Oh, I am ready. Um, I again, I hate to bear uh, bear bad news, but this uh, this clock is designed to be powered by steam, and it has a electrical motor as a backup. But it turns out that the steam power wasn't that great for keeping accurate time, and since then they've switched to the electric backup. So it's the steam. I I believe is now just for the chimes for calling the uh, quarter to the hour and then the hour mark when it puffs the steam and sings the song. So sorry if I ruined anyone's day there. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll have just broken several hearts right now. Speaking of, let's, let's throw the top on there. We've got enough other details in here. Uh, oh, not just the top, but the the four. You've got the main chime. I believe that one is is that the one that goes off every hour, and then you've got the or vent, and then you've got the four smaller ones, which I believe go on the on each corner. Might go on the. I don't know, but they are other than in size, they look like they're identical. So that makes our that makes our life real easy. So this is why I drew it earlier. It's, uh, it's already ready to go. And I think our default 24 sided circle should be just fine for this one. All right, so a little follow me love again, using a circle this time. I think you've got this well under control. I'm gonna step away and get a drink of water really quick and right. I'll be right back. Thanks. When you use follow me, those of you who have done it know that you, it breaks up into segments, all your pieces. This is one of those areas when you need to, you can do something like I could double click on this and run my weld command and uh, it will weld those edges. The, it doesn't though give you like a circle would where it just gives you the center. So I still need to find the center on this, uh, but that can be useful just to know you can easily weld some of these lines. Um, you, you can select everything and try and weld. That doesn't work as well, but if you do something like this, it tends to work okay where I can weld that. This one, if I double click weld, and it'll weld the two that you have selected. But for this, I just need to uh, it's not hard to find the, the 24 segments and where that would cross. So that gives me all I need to move that into place. And we should be able to take advantage of our uh, components and just put one of these on this corner and then drop it into the larger component. Let's scale it down first. I'm back if you need me. Oh my goodness. It went like all to pieces. You wouldn't believe the zoo that ensued while you were gone. I was worried about that. So I will go in here and paste in place and okay, you called out rightly because we're sort of moving deep into the second hour of this. How are we going to do these numbers? I don't have a good way to do these other than manually and um, I think we just have to use some 3D text, so. Well, I had a suggestion if you wanted to By hear By all it. means. 
Well, it, it requires a uh, TomTom's uh, 3D text editor or what's mm -hmm. called editable 3D text extension, which I have to say is one of my favorites because I put text in my models all the time. And what's great about it is that I can style the text and then I can make a copy of it. And it's essentially a component. So you can make it unique and then change the text and all the other attributes are there. Uh, so you basically array one, you build one with the editable text editor and then array them, and then you can change them at any time. Um, and you, of course, that's true of not just changing them once, but if you wanted to change them tomorrow or the next day. I just absolutely love that extension and the ability to do that. So you, what you would suggest if I follow, and if I use that, I'm gonna have to install it because I'm pretty sure I don't have it uh, currently. But um, so what you're suggesting is, so let's, we just build one of these. So let's say we just build the simple one, an I, or maybe we'll build a two or three just to give us the, the it, it shouldn't matter though. No, so, it doesn't matter. Just pick one. Yep. So you're using the regular 3D text editor. Is that what you're, is that what you've got here? Yeah. And I, I yeah. Um, so let's uh, say it's that. Did, uh, I don't mind that font, but I did it. Oh, it's not extruded. Okay. Let's extrude it out again. This is too, uh, too large, but all right. Well, clearly didn't need to do that. But it, so having not used it do you do one and then you go back in i you know let's say i do this one i rotate it around and then you're saying you would come in and edit each of these or do yeah, you need you to would, start with tom tom's tool oh yeah you would need to you would need to build the text originally with tom tom's text editor and then what you could do is go and change it um the nice thing about it is just it gives you the ability to change it anytime um so, so when you, okay. so if you knew you didn't have to, like you were doing a one-off, like this clock face and you just want to do each one manually, that's, I guess maybe that's okay, you know? But for me, it's like whenever I'm working with text, I always like the ability to know that I can edit the text. Um, I wish I could, um, yeah. I just, it's hard being a backseat driver. I, I know because I want to just pop in and take over the reins. That's the hardest part about being a trainer is when you're po pointing over the shoulder of someone and you're trying to tell them how to do something and they're just learning SketchUp and you have to be really careful not to be like, can I, you know, can I show you? Can I have your mouse, please? Yeah, I always ask. Can I have your mouse first before I just <laughs> pop in well, and start moving things around? Okay. So uh, it, I'm trying to keep this off screen, but as you may have seen, even internally, because there's a bit of discussion going on about this, that people are like, you, you have to sign into SketchUp every few days. It's not letting me sign in. I'm trying to sign in and use yeah. the extension warehouse and I'm getting signed in errors. So we'll, we'll have to skip that one for the day. The then. pain and that is unfortunate. Um, so I think the other way that we would do this, probably a couple of people are thinking like, you would just use uh, an external tool really because there's several vector tools. I'm sure Illustrator can, I'm thinking of a different one where I would build this, use a, a different feature. But I, you know, so Eric's suggestion of TomTom's 3D text is uh, a very interesting one. Again, if you have others, I'm gonna build this out manually just because that's sort of what we're left with right now. But but uh, let us know tools internal or external um, that you might use because that's kind of a, this is, this is one of those interesting challenges. It's not natively necessarily built in and I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so that I have more room for my, I think Nathaniel might have joined us late. He says that he likes what you've done with the leaves. So haters back off. <laughs> uh, we've, got, we've got 
we have some support for the the effort you put into those <laughs> it was an attempt uh, they they're very messy geometry but they are at least 3d leaves <laughs> so yay for that um i think let me I, I, let, let's do this and then i'll build the flowers by using the same ones and just you know making them smaller and squashing them we'll hack it together we'll make it work okay so where where where, where are we where, where are we where are we okay let's let's build this out um everybody this is your time for uh grabbing some water because i'm just going to create 12 of these and uh let me get it close from the start extrude it out by five and in the fonts I, let's try i'm gonna guess seven inches and see how close that was i may not have entered that let's try that again it's still got 12. There we go. That one looks pretty close. If I make it six, it'll fit. So. I hear you, Eric, when you're like, oh, you want to reach through and take over. And there's certain things you're like, let me just, let me just. If you build it on your side, I wonder. If I passed it over to you. Right. No, that would have taken some planning and pre-thinking. That would have been, um, that would have been fun. And I think that's something that I would love to actually do in the future so that we can build more complex scenes is that, you know, while we're talking, we actually have two models going on and they've, they've been, we use the reload feature, right? The component and reload. So to sort of mimic X references so that uh, as we go, you can see, you know, you can see what I'm working on or I can see what you're working on, but that we'll have to save for another live stream. Um, it has been requested. We, we definitely want to try uh, yeah, more collaboration on these live streams. We just haven't pulled it off yet. Um, definitely one of those interesting, you know, I do not want to build this inside yet. Uh, I'm going to permission to give you a hard time. You never, you never stopped you before permissions. Um, I'm, I'm wondering why you moved the, I know you were working on the leaf and so you moved the clock face off of your image, but why not have, why not do this when, when your clock face is on top of the image in x-ray mode so that, you know, so your placement and stuff um, is more you know, closely in line with the scale right. and placement of the, of the original. Um, totally a valid question, right? Why not, why aren't we, uh, you know, doing, doing yeah, this so that we can see what we're doing? Um, partially it's because I assume that having the reference, it doesn't matter for the numbers, right? I, I'm going to make them at intervals, no matter how it matches up with the clock. Partially it's because we saw from the beginning, we knew it's a perspective image. We know it's off. And so at this point, uh, I, I don't feel like there's quite the value we get directly off of it. I don't know. That's that's my thinking, and I can get distracted by trying to match it up. That's no, my fair thinking. enough. You're just curious. If yeah. There's a reason. That's all. No, it's yeah. a it's a totally great question, right? Like, the the thing that we're gonna run into now. So if I. Uh, Uh, um, I'm going to try and place these all at the same spot, but that, that, this is another one where I'm, I'm running into, um, what's the best way to do this from the, are you racing against the clock now? Yes. 
Um, okay, let me let me let me do something here. Uh, I'm gonna make twelve sides. I drew this line, so it should be from the center. Let me start. I'm gonna tr I'm gonna see if this works. Okay. I'm gonna have to reference my thing over here. Okay, here we go. So if I I've got the size correct. And I did say go get a drink because this is I, I do not want it to to do that either. Where it you like it's trying to place it on a different orientation. That's not what I want. So I move it up here. It does the same thing. Stop that. Don't do that. Um, I had just said a while ago that I absolutely, my favorite thing about SketchUp is it's inferencing engine and now I'm fighting it. So I'm going to just visibly put it up there. We're going to have to do it that way. We're going to get through this. Oh, I have nothing but faith in your abilities. So if you um, if it's not too distracting, I can give some more fun steam clock facts while you're working, and then that way you don't have to. I can leave you alone. Let's hear. So the location of the clock is actually um, not arbitrary. It was placed there to cover a steam vent. Um, there is I don't know that much about it, but there is what's called a Vancouver. At least I'm not sure if it's still used. It'd be a good question, but. They have what's called a distributed steam heating system under the sidewalks. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the steam, other than the fact that the steam is heated, um, how it gets into, uh, you know, the residences or the businesses. But apparently, that's where one of the steam vents were, and it uses the steam from the distributed. The clock uses the steam from that distributed steam heating network. Huh. Yeah. <clears throat> Makes me want to learn a lot more about steam clocks and steam heating. Is anybody going to call All me I... out yet? Nobody's calling you out yet. Everyone's oh, happy. No, they were having that... a debate. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I, I've got my one, two, three in the wrong place, but that'll be the easiest to fix. What's the debate? Oh, um, you got to check your numbers because, oh, I think you're moving. You just moved it. Yeah, because we have 12 on the top, right? So you right. caught that. Yeah. Also, like, based on the font, you know, we'd get better. Right, we're gonna leave it alone. We're not gonna. No, no, it's fine. Get caught up in that. <laughs> for, for those purposes, could be. Maybe I. See, I, I don't know <laughs> Roman numerals very well. That would be a five. And you can put the number before the five, that's one less, which is four, which somebody already pointed out in the chat that the four is not represented the way we normally do, which is a V with a one to the left. It's actually four singles, uh, which is not how we were taught in school. Right. I don't know the answer to that, but I could look it up. That, I, I, I had a similar thought. I, that's, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was usually represented with an IV, right? But, yep. interesting. Those Romans, man. It's kind of meditative, you know, just to have silence, just watching the need... clock, just tick on, just watching time, just tick away. Do we need, uh, yeah. Now, if we want to make it kind of fun, we'd have, uh, I don't know. Like Jeopardy, is it Jeopardy music? Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, that's when they're. Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen Jeopardy. I'm not the best. I have movie. I have movie references, but I don't have a lot of television show <laughs> references. You would think they're one and the same, but they're actually um, not. Well, to to the point you just made, if we look at this clock, um, 
nine is represented not with a V and four. It's it's represented how how we anticipated four to be, right? I X. The X and the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I wonder. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I'm going to have to get um, our friend going back to where we started this stream when I told you that the uh, designer and builder of this clock was a Raymond Saunders. I'm going to get him on the phone here and ask him. If, well, I thought we. Uh, what, I thought we he had was somebody thinking. who did interview him about we did. this clock. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that? I have to go back up the thread. So let us know why this clock is uh, is so uh, represented. Man, not being able, I I I can go in and and do it after the fact, but those uh, those widely spaced eyes are almost causing us some grief. We'll we'll be fine though. No, it's okay. As you say, we've got a lot of really judgmental people here, and I mean that to say we love you guys. You're you're, you're so good natured. Let us get away with all sorts of sloppy. <laughs> um, yeah, it was Randy who chimed in. I found a, a comment from the beginning. It says there's a story of why he went with the four eyes instead of the V I or I B, depending on how you, which direction you're looking. So we don't want to put you on the spot, Randy, but, but you're curious on the spot. minds want to know you're on the spot. I guess I just did, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> you are now we all must know. Hor Hornox uh, is in a little bit late. Speaking of time. Somebody lost track of time and didn't realize we started one hour, actually 97 minutes ago, according to my YouTube clock. Wow, we've been doing this for 97 minutes. I know, it, time buzzes. Just sort of having time fun time does. getting in there. All right. Transom says, don't get all steamed up with pride over this model when you're done. Oh, oh I will. I already am. Oh, I'm, I'm steamed. Hey, why do you have just the the one? You have those little knobs on the left of the clock. Weren't those supposed to be placed? Or you can do that at the end. What's the that? the little oh. details? Um, yeah, the, the what are you talking the... about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are those supposed to be inside the component or not? Oh, they are inside the component. That's... There are okay, but we're, but we're missing the one on the right. Or is but there not one on there? That was my strategy, is I only put it oh, on Oh, I see what that. you tricked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, re I see. Remember that? You're only working on one side. Ah, so smart. That that was that was my uh, little, little diatribe about working on symmetrical corners and that you could take different approaches. All right, let's... Uh, Randy, Randy chimed in if you want to hear the answer to the number four. Well, we all do. Well, everyone can read it on the chat. You're the one who oh, can't, so I'm asking you, Tyson, if you want to hear it. I want to hear. To hear. Yes. I'm yeah, I guess back in back in Austria, when the king was having a clock, a cuckoo clock face designed for him, he, the king himself, mistakenly put four singles instead of the IV, and the clockmakers were afraid to upset the king. You so they can't to build it question the king. Oh my gosh. Oh, isn't isn't that? Isn't that awesome that like we, we, we live with this one decision, this one monarch made once upon a time, because if he's having a bad day, you're like, I'm not going to tell him he's wrong. <laughs> I love it. Uh, don't you wish that was your job where like nobody ever. No, actually, that would be bad for modeling if nobody ever corrected us and we just built bad models all the time and thought we were the best at it. Yeah. Well, so. That sounds like, which seems right, that like, and I just don't notice because I don't study these things. So is this a very common clock face? And more commonly, we would use uh, IV as a four, but for clocks, because it goes back to this kind of 
old clock. Is that pretty common? That sounds like that might be the case. Or is it unique to this one and just certain clocks made at a certain time or in a certain period? I'm asking out there because I assume our wise uh, audience may know. Yes, our audience is wise. That's why we invite them to do this with us. Mm -hmm. Cause we learn something every time. We learn from you. So Lawrence actually says that all clocks use the four. See, I guess I guess we've been looking at digital timepieces and now Apple Watches for so long that I don't think we've even stopped to look at the Roman numerals that closely. At least I haven't, so I'll take the. Uh, I'll just speak for myself. Man, I almost uh, almost goofed on that one. Drew my circle based on the wrong edges. Okay. And you're not grouping these, you're just treating this all as one piece for now. Well, I'm just you're drawing not separating one. Out the, yeah, you're just doing the I'm one, just drawing one hand, stuff. so there's no point in doing it yet. Um, this is all we need, that, that's plenty of detail. I'll mirror it. Is that mirror 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 copy. or is that the mirror that's in Sketch Plus? This is Tig's mirror. I think Tig's mirror. Okay. Sketch Plus works similar. Um, but I, I do really I've grown accustomed to Tig's mirror tool and I really like it. And uh, we all have our kind of wish list of, of extensions and plugins that we wish um, SketchUp, SketchUp would uh, put in natively. And that's definitely on the top of my list is a, a dedicated mirror tool that works very much like that. Um, I, I think it's an excellent. Yes, especially with components. And when you've got symmetrical things, you know, you don't want to definitely don't want to draw it twice You do it once mirror it or scale it. I, I kind of learned by watching Chris Roseborn. He uses the scale by negative one, which yeah. I don't I don't see that that puts me out too bad. I know that's sort of an extra step, but I don't really particularly mind having to do that. I, that that's what I I've done almost my entire SketchUp career, and I only started using this other one just in the past few months because I was like, you know, there's a it it's it right like I, I think sometimes there's like the idea of like super optimization, and no, it just doesn't matter that much like. Yeah, using scale. I don't mind. One. Yeah, and for for the people, yeah, for the people who want to like automate everything, I'm a type of person because I come from hand drawing world where it's like, it's a process. You know, if if all you did was input things as parameters, then you you know you'd you'd probably be better off using a different software. I'm totally fine with the fact that just like drawing, it's like you can't bypass. You can't just skip the step and say I want to go straight to the painting. It's like you have to you know, cut the paper and you have to size it and you have to get your tools and, you know, there's a process in that. And I think modeling to me, it's, I don't, yeah. So whenever anyone's like, oh, I just want to press buttons and I can do this super 10 times faster. That's true in some cases. Sometimes you're like, oh, I don't want to have to do this manually again and again and again. Um, but a lot of times, yeah, I don't mind. Yep. Sorry, that was my digression. I digress. That's what we're here for. Okay, let's do that. Where did your other one go? Oh, I, I set it off to the side. I didn't want it interfering with my, my tracing. Oh, your boneyard. Yeah, that's right, Titan's boneyards. It did that that one it's just right there. It's not a boneyard. 
but I can't defend. Uh, Dave R says that he's set shortcut keys for flip along. So if you if you're comfortable with what access you're flipping along, depending on how you know the orientation you're drawing, that's actually a smart idea because yeah. right clicking it and saying flip along is sort of an, sort of takes a second you know to find that, but to shortcut it, that'd be fast. All right, so I just set it right over there. I'll tell you what I'm doing in this one more than what I do usually, which is something you do, Eric, is I'm modeling in orthographic view. I always uh, model in perspective, but I'm jumping into orthographic view so frequently in this one. But you well, like is... modeling in orthographic view. Why, why is that? Uh, in this case, I think it's. I think yeah. I'm just jumping into orthographic view, as a as I'm referencing. So I, it's just uh, happens to be what uh, what I'm just staying in when I'm close up in the details. But as soon as I zoom out and I realize I'm doing it, I'm like, oh no 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 no. So I. I haven't noticed that. Are you switching with the keyboard shortcut between your parallel projection and, or how, how are you switching between perspective and ortho? Yeah, keyboard. Uh, you're sneaky keyboard shortcut. See, I, that's hard. That's subtle. You got to really pay attention, folks, with this, um, with, with, the, with this guy. Not only keyboard shortcut, I'm using P, which is should be push pull by default um, standards and. Uh, but I, I'm using my tablet today, if you can see uh, by my janky <laughs> glove, my fingerless janky cutoff glove. Uh... So kegification is telling us that time is slipping away oh, here. Oh, sure is. So it yeah, is, right we would that. have, if, you, if we were gonna eat up all of our, it's funny because you started this by saying, this should be I relatively know. simple. I think we could do this in a lot less time than we normally take. And now we're 13 minutes or 12 minutes now to um, sure. before we, we need to pull the plug. The, it, isn't that, now that you've done it, Eric, isn't that just the way where you're like, and and, and we were, we were like, you know, had all the ma major portions of it done within the first hour. But isn't it just the way that you're like, Oh, you totally overestimate how fast you can get in and kind of do some of the details. Oh, I'm well. slowing you down with all, my, with all my commentary. If I just was quiet and just let you model, I'm sure you could do it in half I'm the time. I'm sure I would be five minutes faster. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's so funny. That reminds me of the freeway. Like, has anyone seen people that cut you off and, like, are darting and weaving oh, in and right. out? <laughs> I, I read a study that like over the course of like a hundred miles, if you like nearly kill everyone on the freeway, you're only going to save yourself about six minutes. Uh, Cause I used to drive from Orange County to San Diego often. And uh, I thought, yeah, you know what? For five minutes, it's probably not worth risking everyone's life. Uh, it doesn't get you that far ahead, to be honest. Yeah. Don't do it folks. Don't do it. Public service. announcement. <laughs> Just drive uh, the speed limit. Perfect. Man. Sorry, keep going, Tyson. Doing great. We're 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 good. I mean, we could it's we good. can cut it off. That's the nice thing is we actually did. Uh, we we got far enough along that we could we could call it. I'll throw a few textures on here, and just for good measure, I do want to go in and put the flowers in there because then we can copy them down here. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, we're I think I think we're pretty good. The the lovely thing about components right is we spent the majority of our time over here not working on our final model but uh that way kept it nice and clean um but let's say don't forget to make that interior piece uh glass because it's going to bug me my oh. ocd will Agreed. Not like it if it's showed and solid. Agreed. And we'll, we'll cheap out. We'll just create a surface that will act like uh, there's depth here. 
without actually creating the depth. Um, but yeah, then we'll create, uh, paint that, paint, uh, paint it on this side. Ransom asks if you plan on posting. Is that what you always do when you finish? I know I wasn't really able to do that because I was rendering. That's a different process. But do you um, post them when you're done on the 3D warehouse? Uh, you usually. Um, we definitely always are willing to. I agree. With, I I sometimes forget. Um, but by all means, have Adam. Okay, so there you go, Trans. Look for it maybe this afternoon after uh, we clean up the boneyard. <laughs> I never clean up the boneyard. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're right. You don't have to. What you can do is select the component, right click, save as, and then post that one. And then keep your boneyard. <laughs> yeah, I do not clean up. Let's see. What kind of tint do I want to give to this thing? It's almost I got like a dark green patina. It's hard, yeah. like a, you know, with bronze it can sometimes look green at a certain angle. Right, like, and, and I don't want to make it so dark that that you lose details. Um, but anyway, let's not get lost there. We're we're we were going to try and fix these flowers in our last few minutes. Uh, but yeah, that green's a nice suggestion, and put uh, we'll make this. Yeah, that looks looks great we'll make these gold not gold but you know, oh this is where switch. yeah when you get down to the wire this is where you can cheat and take a, a, a photo texture of like the inside like the inner clock workings do you know what i mean so you don't have yeah. to model all that interior and just put that in behind the glass so it, you know it looks like it's got that uh the motor and all that stuff in there yeah but uh we won't don't do that now i'm just saying if you want to Okay. Drippy Legend is asking for us to send them a download to SketchUp for my school. Well, we actually have this thing called SketchUp for Schools, and it's free. Uh, so thanks for asking. It's it's actually a browser-based SketchUp. All you need to do, uh, because it's SketchUp for Schools, so you don't need a Trimble ID or anything like that. It works with your G Suite. So if your classroom uses G Suite or um, the Microsoft School Login. By all means. Laura Laura's chimed in. She can hear the whistle blowing. Oh, uh, sweet. Thank you, Laura, for participating. Very much so. Have you, so Laura, have you, uh, is this our Laura or is this? It's uh, our Laura. Okay. I know, right? Like it, it was cool to listen to it. It was, it was very cool. And uh, just to get, you know, sentimental for a moment, Laura has been at SketchUp, um, what, as long as I have, she, she's, she's old school, you know, we're, we're 18 ish years, uh, at this wonderful place we call SketchUp. And Laura's been there the entire time. And yet, because of the whole thing that we're all, you know, as we all know, uh, I haven't seen her in years. So I got to see Laura for the first time in years, not, we, I saw her a little bit before, but it was great to see people. I'm sure everybody can relate, even our own team members at base camp, because we just haven't seen uh, people recently. So thanks for joining us today. Yeah, for those that haven't met Tyson in real life, he's, he's tall. So you'd be surprised. I know. I look so diminutive here. Chris, you're always sitting down in these videos. Aaron's <laughs> tall, too, to be honest with you. It's intimidating working with this group. Uh, but Eric is so buff. He played college football. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to admit... <laughs> can't tell from the laughing uh, it's far from true but i'm trying to imagine i'm not trying to throw eric under a too big a bus but um have you played sports eric are there any sports you enjoy 
Uh, yeah, cross country because I get to be by myself the whole time. Oh, um, of course. Uh, up, in, up in up in the mountains and the hills and um, winding through the paths and stuff. So. A runner. Yeah. Eric I'm a solo. Willies. I'm a solo sport person. Yeah. Not a great team player, so sorry <laughs> to everyone who I've let down. Yes, you are. No, actually, SketchUp's great because uh, um, you know I I'm not on you know we're not just we're not just the video content team, you know, we're not just the training team. We're like, we're, we're all, doesn't matter what, you know, we're asked to do. We, we do it right. It's SketchUp. And that's, that's what the fun part about, about doing this is. Yeah. Throw, throw me in any role with SketchUp and I'll jump in and support. Ooh, look at that. That's looking sweet. All right. All right. Good call. Here Good call. Go. Finishing the flower. And let's just remember to capture that much of it. So I'll copy that. Hopefully, if I've built that inside there correctly. Yep, good. Did. There we go. Got our, our flowers looking pretty nice. Got just a few minutes to pop these last ones in. Uh, that looks awesome. Sweet. You this are so was, close. This was fun. We've got Colin joining us too. So have you guys, has our team been watching and just quiet this whole time? Thanks for chiming in. Uh, always good to have some love from the team. Ron Oliver joined. Uh, he said he started using SketchUp only two days ago and is amazed by the Whoa. software. Yes, that was fun. Two days ago. Welcome to the club. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, welcome. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the family. Uh, welcome to the uh, nerddom. So however you want to. It's uh, your your when you the get boneyard? the not the boneyard, but when you catch this catch a bone, bug, no. <laughs> it'll catch you. You know what? I uh, let's call it there. Uh, I you know, I'm not gonna it. put something on the inside. The last last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to group this. Now this is a little bit bad practice because I'm, I've got embedded components and they'll, when you mess with scale on the outside of components, you just have to be aware, but I'm going to group this and then scale it to the correct size by, I just can draw a line here at the base up to roughly the top and then use the tape measure tool measure that it measures at 37 feet i'm going to call that we said it was 16 to 17 feet i'm going to call that 16 uh feet 8.5 inches yeah. just for kicks it's roughly that size all right and then there's me looking all dapper at the clock there we go oh wait hold on hold on Put it on the ground, Tyson. Put it on uh, the ground. And finally, shadows. Yay! Yay! I don't have bad sound effects, but this is where the kids would <laughs> all yell. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Oh. Nicely yeah. done. Nice, nicely done. And look at that. One minute to spare. Wow. Just in the nick of time. So for all of sure. you who did not hear all of our time puns, this guy did it. Uh, just in time. Get it just within. Oh yeah. Hey, that was fun. I, it, it's fun to get back into the swing. It's fun to, uh, to, to catch up with those of you who joined us. Thank you for, for hanging out with us. Um, Eric, thanks for joining us. You, uh, you're going to be not only hosting, but co-hosting more often now. So we get to enjoy your sunny disposition. <laughs> which is sunny um even though it's coming from not so sunny uh yeah, uh washington like state <laughs> but yeah everybody um be well have a great weekend be safe um anything anything on the radar eric that's worth adding for we've been talking about upcoming base camp for so long that now we're like i don't know what to 
Are right, you're next week though, Eric? Right? You're slated. For I'm next, next week. week. We don't know what you're doing. I don't know. Yet. No, yeah. but if somebody has a great idea, uh, let me know. I, I think I'd like to try modeling something. The last two I did, I sort of composed sort of more like arranged scenes and rendered scenes. And I think maybe it'd be more fun to, I don't know, go in and I'd love to do something. You, you made a good point. I think we should go in and look back at some of the presentations for Basecamp and whether it's my idea or somebody else's and see if we can pull something, a lessons learned and share some of that knowledge. So hopefully everyone, uh, yeah, uh, either way, it's going to be awesome whatever it is. Awesome. I am going to try. Everybody can drop drop out right now, but I'm going to try just a quick ambient occlusion render just for kicks and giggles because I want to see how it looks like, um, which means I need to throw in a little bit of a street. Maybe after the fact, I'll throw this on an actual street. But yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to whatever you have in store for us next week. Let's see. Which one am I looking for? This one in the window? Oh, yeah. I actually worked on a project in Vancouver. Kegification says to do something that's uh, connected to the indigenous, um, like the totem poles or some of the welcome statues. I know. Mm -hmm. Did you see the welcome statues in Vancouver? Um, oh, in the airport? In the awesome. airport. The ones that were the big, the wood one. Yeah. I modeled those for a project because we were sort of, we were trying to create our own version of welcome statues. And it was fun, just take a photograph, just exactly what you're doing here and try and model that. So um, yeah, that was a great idea. Yeah, very cool. Ooh, look at that render. Ooh. Uh, simple render. Um, let's do a quick, throw it in with some, Try that one. Um, w one last time pun. We're done, so we can officially clock out after this. Nice, love it. <laughs> oh yeah, that was from that wasn't me. I have to go back and read the thread that came in a few minutes ago. <laughs> I've been Never. sitting on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, there's our there's our final rendered view looks looks nice and both like sketchy and a little bit ambient uh it's fun to get back into it i, I will call it there <clears throat> so cheers everybody clock out all right see you next week